Secure the signal booster. Hello, hello, hello everyone and welcome to Game Pulse where we take a look at an early access game at its current state and time. In today's episode we will be looking at Starship Troopers Extermination, a first person co-op shooter where you and your friends have to fight against the Arachnid Swarm. But first a little background on the Starship Troopers franchise. Starship Troopers started out as a military science fiction novel by American author Robert A. Heinlein. It was first published as a two-part serial in the magazine of fantasy and science fiction as Starship Soldier and later published on November 5, 1959. The novel was later adapted into a film called Starship Troopers and released November 7, 1997. This was the start of the Starship Troopers franchise where many films, television shows and even video games came out throughout the years. Some of the most recent Starship Trooper games is the Starship Troopers Extermination and Starship Troopers Terran Command. With the background out of the way, let's move on to the actual game. In Starship Troopers Extermination, you are taking on the Arachnid Horde through a variety of classes and game modes. The three classes are namely Hunter, Bastion and Operator and with each class having a distinctive look and function in every battle. Now let's take a closer look of how each class works and the weapons that they offer. The first class we're going to be looking at is the Hunter with the motto Death from Above. The focus of the Hunter class is high agility and mobility trying to get to high places as fast as possible to take out those high value targets. The special abilities and weapons of the Hunter complement this exquisitely, with the special abilities like jump jet and high intensity speed training, making you get up any high place you want as fast as possible. Let's not forget the speciality weapons of the Hunter, such as the TW202-L Morita Hawkeye, your first ever sniper rifle of the class after you've graduated from the Merida Mark 1. And lastly a weapon that everybody wants with a sore heart, the Merida Triple X Sniper Rifle. A weapon capable of taking out high value targets efficiently and quickly. Any team without a hunter will be a death sentence since a hunter plays such an important role on the battlefield that it cannot be replaced by any other class. The Bastion is a heavily armored suppressive fire machine designed specifically to stop the bug horde in their tracks and buy everyone some time. Their special abilities and deployables glorify these attributes quite beautifully. With a special ability called Siege Mode, you are capable of digging in and holding down the fire button. This works quite well with the specialist weapon for the Bastion. The weapon's called the Morita Mark III Saw. Designed for suppressive fire, the saw is an excellent weapon to keep the bugs at bay. It is recommended that you use the saw with the siege mode ability because of the glaring lack of accuracy that the saw has and the incredible boost that siege mode gives. It is a beautiful combination made to become the wall. Lastly, we have the Operator, a support infantry class designed to support the entire team through healing or rearming. The way the Operator achieves this incredible support function is through their utilities and their special abilities. The two special abilities are Canister Slot and Medical UAV. Medical UAV is capable of reviving and healing any nearby friendlies quickly and efficiently. The canister slot for this class is particularly interesting as it frees up your hands while still carrying a canister or you can carry two mission critical canisters at once. It's an excellent design and a winning formula. However, the greatest strength of the operator doesn't come from just their special abilities. It also comes from their utilities as some of their most unique utilities such as the first aid stem, a medical station, a rally beacon and a speed stem is made to make everyone's lives a lot easier and a lot more efficient to combat the Arachnid Horde. 
The operator isn't defenseless either. With the Chi Hong grenade launcher, they are more than capable of defending themselves against the arachnid horde. With a couple of grenades, you can get very far. With the classes covered, one of the things still to quickly go over is that each class has a set of perks that enhance their abilities, either by trying to make up for weaknesses or empowering them in just the right way to make their current strengths even stronger. With the combination of these classes making one hell of a team, you and your team will be deployed in one of four missions. These four modes are Assault and Secure, Arc Slam, Horde and Hive Hunt. Yes. The general formula for these modes are Insertion, where you and your troops will be dropped off, Doing the mission, which either it is Arc Slam or Horde mode, whatever you need to do, Defending, which is within three of the four modes, and Extraction. Every mode has an Extraction phase, no matter if you win or lose. Someone will be there to pick you up, no matter what. The only catch is, you need to make it to the dropship. Now let's take a closer look at what each of these game modes entail. First up, we have Advance and Secure. When you and your fellow infantrymen land, you are tasked to capture and secure territory, as well as establish a foothold on the planet. This is done by securing an area with a bunker or by completing one of the many missions that is given to you throughout the game. In the final phases of the mode, you have to create a base where you will defend the Ark, a seismic surveying device specially made by the Federation. Once the Ark is established, you will have to defend your base from all of the Arachnid Swarm. You will not have a respite until the Ark is done, after which you and your team will have to extract by running through the dropship and hoping everybody makes it out. The next mode is Arc Slam. Quite similar to Assault and Secure in the fact that you have to defend the Ark from an invading horde, this time it's a little bit more free, as you have free reign while you wait for the Ark. But in this case, you won't just wait for it, you'll be the one powering the Ark with gas. While you and your team gather gas and all, you have quite a bit of time to build up your defenses and create an incredible base where you will have to face the Arachnid Horde at the final stages when the Arc Slam activates. Once the Arc Slam is active, the Horde will come and try to destroy the Arc. You have to defend it until the Arc Slam has finished its surveying. Once it is finished, just like every other mission, you have to get to the Extraction Dropship. While Advanced and Secure and Arc Slam are pretty similar, Horde and Hive Hunt are quite different. In Horde mode, you have to defend against 10 ways of increasing difficulty, and if your base falls, you'll have to get out via extraction. A very tall ask with that many arachnids trying to kill you. Thankfully, you aren't completely defenseless. After each wave, you get a large sum of ore to build up your defenses, repair any damage done, and to ensure that you have enough resources to survive the next wave. If you have successfully defended against the Horde, you'll be given a very short time period to get to the dropship, but there isn't any arachnids to stop you, so it's basically just a sprint to the dropship. And lastly, we have Hive Hunt, arguably one of the most difficult game modes that there is. With only three other infantrymen by your side, you have to fight insurmountable odds to go deep within the arachnid nest, plant nuclear devices and destroy eggs. This is also the game mode with one of the more unique arachnids called the Royal Guard. The Royal Guard is only encountered within Hive Hunt and it is terrifying to see. After you planted the nuclear devices, it's time to get out of there as fast as possible. You have to run almost all the way back to make it to the extraction zone. But once you've made it, you are free and clear. Throughout the game modes, I referenced quite a bit about building defenses. This is achieved with a standard Federation build tool. This is one of the most unique aspects of the game, as it allows you to build a base 
very quickly and very efficiently that makes it look beautiful and effective. These build tools have quite the interesting capacity to build a large variety of defensive buildings and some support buildings as well. Some of the structures you can build are structures like a wall, a bunker, gate, large gate, and even electric fencing. The combination of these structures and a good team can stop almost any arachnid horde. All of these game modes are played in a variety of places and planets. As of current, we only have two planets. Vallaka, a desert and abandoned planet, one of the first to be added, and Agni Prime, the newest addition and one of the most beautiful and stunning vistas. Some arachnids have even evolved to adapt to this planet, such as the Fire Warrior, which is exclusively found on Agni Prime. Even with all of these beautiful locations, you still need to face the arachnid horde. The horde also consists out of a variety of sizes and functions within the swarm. Now let's go over and see what the arachnid swarm has to offer. First up is the drone. While being mostly useless and the smallest of all the other arachnids, they are still perfect for harassing and in a large enough swarm, they will be a big problem for whoever they target. Next up we have the warrior, the backbone of the arachnid swarm coming in two variants, the normal and the fire warrior. While being the most common and forming the backbone, they cannot be taken lightly. An individual warrior can easily take out any infantryman if they are not careful. Mixed in with the drones and the warriors is the gunners. With a beetle-like appearance, it is designed to take out infantrymen, focusing on one and constantly shooting them with spikes. They are of quite a bit of importance, as they have the capability of whittling down anyone's health to zero in a matter of seconds. Towering over all the other arachnids, the tiger is a hard and very deadly enemy, designed to break through all defenses very quickly. The tiger isn't a pushover either, they have a large amount of health and take quite a while to take down. Another arachnid that looks very similar to the tiger is the royal guard. While being faster, stronger and even more deadly, it is only found within the hive, to protect the hive no matter the cost. Lastly, we have two of the most arguably deadly arachnids of the swarm, the Grenadier and the Inferno. Both of these are seen as artillery arachnids. The Grenadier throwing massive balls of plasma to destroy defenses and disorientate. While the Inferno, a very recent addition, throws balls of fire. A truly nightmarish scenario for anyone on the ground. With the swarm's large variety and each of the arachnids filling a specific role, you as the players have to coordinate and work together in order to ensure victory no matter what. My final thoughts are this game is incredibly fun to play, especially with friends. Even playing it alone, dropping into a match everybody works towards the common goal of achieving victory for the Federation and defeating the Arachnid Swarm. I would easily recommend this game to everyone if you want to check it out. And with that, I am very excited to see what Allfold Studios will be doing next with the game. We actually have an update coming very soon from Allfold Studios that is going to introduce new classes and a overall progression system. I personally cannot wait. And there will be a video coming out covering exactly that. Thank you everyone for watching and if you enjoyed the video remember to like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below asking for your favorite game to appear on Game Pulse.